All right, you stingy mother listen up. You keep asking me about these god games. All right, fine, fine, you win, you get it. You're gonna get it. I'm going to give you the truth of it all about these three god games and you're gonna like it. So stay tuned. So here's the honest to God truth from the Dirty 20 straight from his mouth about these three games, the Destiny game, the First Descendant, and Warframe. They're all three good. Yes, I'm talking to you, Chad, the one that's sitting in your mom's basement going in and playing the First Descendant because you get to go and see animated cleavage. Oh, these? My boobies? My massive kitties And whatnot. I'm talking to you. Yeah. Yeah, you. And I'm also talking to the Warframe guy that goes in and has nothing better to do than to spend thousands of dollars on this game in order to get the best cosmetics that exist in the game for one singular character. Is it worth it? Oh yeah, it's worth it. If you're strong enough. And that also means to you too, Destiny players, where you guys are literally the epitome of toxic. The only game that is more toxic than you is League of Legends. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I didn't do fucking shit. Yeah, I'm talking to the three of you. Yeah, all three of these games, they're good. Now, for the rest of you that are in my community that actually care about the three games and want to know the pros and cons of what this game these three games entail this video is now the, for the rest of the time for you let's get into it so let's start off with talking about my favorite of the three games we're going to be talking about this evening destiny 2 let's give the pros and the cons for this game however and as always we'll start with the pros and we'll give three for each uh, so pro number one is that it has a active and large community. So Destiny 2, as, as well as Destiny 1, has had a very, very large community for years, years. And this community is one that is very headstrong, very devoted to the storyline and the game for this. Uh, and it will never back down if i'm being quite honest which leads me into pro number two the storyline as a dungeon master of 25 years for D, &D i always love games in particular that have a really good storyline this one in particular has a fantastic storyline it is a wonderful easy to understand storyline that pretty much anybody can get into the newer players returning players does not matter where you come from the story is easy to pick up it's easy to understand it's easy to follow and i really really enjoy that about this game and the last and not least pro for destiny 2 is how engaging and fluid the gunplay feels as far as the mechanics are concerned nine times out of ten they're going to have the gunplay and the mechanics for this game for things such as raids, dungeons, or whatnot to be pretty accurate most of the time. Now, that's not to say that they're always on point, but they most of the time are on point, and that's what I like a lot about this game. Now, here's the cons, however. This is the one that everybody seems to want to hear about. The three cons in particular. Con number one, frequent balancing issues impacting gameplay. And this goes back to the pro number three, is that there are often times where the gameplay does feel a little bit unbalanced. It feels off. And Bungie usually, usually, not always, usually goes and finds a way to fix that. Uh, I won't say they always have done that, but most of the time they have done that. Uh, but it is a recurring occurrence that happens in this game is that there's a lot of balancing issues that impact the gameplay. 
Second is the division within the community. And this goes back to something that I said earlier as a joke, but it honestly really isn't a joke. The community itself for Destiny, you have quite literally 80% of the community in Destiny that are as toxic and demeaning to other players as you could possibly get. The only other game that I have ever witnessed in my entire life that has come close or even further than the toxicity that is found within this this community for this game as far as introducing new players and whatnot is League of Legends. League of Legends quite literally tops this game in particular by a mile and then some when it comes to how experienced players treat the newer or returning players. They don't like those types of players. And anybody that does not fit within their scheme of playing the meta builds is not good enough in their eyes. Uh, but we'll diverge from that a little bit and go into con number three. And this one's a big one. This is a this is one that in particular is the reason why new players and also returning players will completely exclude this game from their category. And that is that some exclusive content can give paying players, not free to play, paying players a huge advantage. So for those that are free to play, a lot of the content that you need in order to get to what they call in game for Destiny 2 is not accessible to you because of the fact that in order to get that access, you have to pay to play in certain aspects of like the DLCs. For example, uh, Final Shape in particular, uh, the re most recent DLC made it to where that you can't access a lot of the new weapons. Uh, that have just been released unless you go and buy the DLC. So if you are looking to go and farm for very particular weapons that would make your build stand out amongst the rest, you can't go and access those weapons without first purchasing the final shape. And it's sad to say that, but that's the honest truth, is that in order to access those those weapons or pretty much any of the further content past the new light stuff you have to pay to get the dlcs and get all of the content in order to progress further in your gameplay now i, I personally understand why that's an, the thing because you know most companies need to find a way in order for them to make money for their games that they've designed but I also see the negative of that because a lot of people don't want to spend hundreds upon hundreds of dollars for a game that they don't even know if they're going to invest into for the newer players or the returning players. A lot of the returning players will quite literally wait until the DLC drops at a lower price and then play that DLC and then not touch it again. They won't even look at it. But that's the issue, right? is that for a game such as Destiny, we need to come up with a way to where that all players, both new, returning, and experienced players, can all enjoy the game together without feeling like that one person, person is over-exceeding the other person just by giving them their credit card number, if that makes sense. But I digress. We are going to move on to the third game here now. So let's get into the game that just recently launched, The First Descendants. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. The First Descendants is a game that I have not had the opportunity to play a whole lot of due to time restraints. But at the current moment, I'll give you what my initial pros and uh, cons are going to be for this game. And they may change later, but this is what I am currently experiencing as of right now. And we will, of course, start with the pros. The number one pro at the top of the list is the satisfying skill play and the gunplay. The overall mechanics of the game, the skill play and the gunplay, feel very unique and very forward, if I'm being honest. Uh, the fact that you have the modules or mods, uh, in this case, that allow you to make custom builds for each individual character 
as well as the guns actually feel like they have some form of weight to them. Feels very satisfying at times. Now, the second pro that I would like to mention is the, honestly, the community itself. And I say this because of the fact that so far, and this just might be a me thing, the community that I've experienced as far as the First Descendants is concerned is a lot more laid back uh, compared to some of the other games that I've played. They seem to be more helpful as far as like trying to make sure that you get the right builds for characters. If you're struggling with something, they're willing to jump in and help you with certain uh, quests that you might have that you are struggling with. Um, I've not actually run into anybody that has really been super toxic towards me as far as this game is concerned. So that I would say that that was a perk that the current community for this game is actually really on par. And the last one, and this one has to do with those free-to-play people, the microtransactions that are in this game are pretty much all cosmetic. So if you're wanting to find a game that quite literally is free to play in the most retrospect way possible 90 percent of the transactions that are in this game are all cosmetic now there are some to where that they will allow you to progress further in the game by like getting xp boosts and getting certain uh descendants unlocked immediately instead of having to go out and grind for them but you are not told or limited to having to buy those uh specific things you can play the game at your own pace you can play the game as you see fit and unlock everything in the game that is available to you in the store without having to purchase a single thing it's quite literally the closest the free to play that you could possibly get without having to worry about buying anything you only have to buy them if you're wanting to progress faster and catch up with what everybody else is doing currently. Now, that's the three pros that I have. Now, the cons, on the other hand, is a completely different story. I do have some very, very straightforward cons that I'm going to get into. And this is from a player that specifically likes very detailed things. And that being number one con for this game is that the story itself is garbage it is absolute trash 100 percent makes absolutely no sense whatsoever the voice acting is god awful it is terrible i won't even go and waste your time into talking about much of it just know that from a dungeon master's perspective the story missions and the voice acting is awful god awful second con that i will go in and give is that the game is minimalized in its in being optimized for max capacity and what i mean by that is that the graphics the cinematics the world building almost seem subpar and i say this because of the fact that i've played both on console and played on pc on console the graphics look 10 times worse than destiny one back in its peak prime of 30 frames per second i would rather play destiny one with 30 frames per second every single day for the rest of my life than to play more than an hour of this game because of how bad the graphics look and the fact that it gives me migraines if i play more than an hour because of the blue screen effect for those that know what a blue screen effect is, it is quite literally that there are certain games that have a specific graphic to them that give off blue light that make it to where that they can cause headaches for certain people. In this case, if I play more than an hour of the first Descendant, I will literally have a migraine for the rest of the day the next day. I can't do it. And that needs to be fixed immediately. Last but not least, and this one is more of a personal thing for me, loading screens. This game has more loading screens than any RPG game I have ever experienced in my life. I have played Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, and multiple other RPG games that all have loading screens. 
this one takes the cake. This one absolutely 100% beats every single game I've ever played with loading screens by 10,000 miles and then some. I have seen more loading screens in this game than I have the actual gameplay, if that makes absolutely any sense whatsoever. But I digress. This is coming from somebody who has not actually reached in-game yet due to the fact of the cons for this game. So I'm just going to leave them as is as of the current motion right now. And I will come back to this later on and give you a full rundown later once I reach in-game. So let's move on to the last and final game. So last but certainly not least on this list of the three games that we are talking about this evening is honestly one that I haven't played in years, but I do know quite a bit about. Warframe. Now, let me be honest. I quit playing Warframe years ago due to the fact that the character that you're currently seeing on the screen in the Gaussian Blur was actually nerfed a while ago and has not been fixed since and that kind of destroyed me in the aspect and kind of left a salty taste in my mouth so i do have a slight slight negative for that but i'm going to give an honest review from the outside perspective regarding that incident so let's start with the pros pro number one is that the game is actually fast paced and has good action with the fast pace. So for anybody who's ever played Warframe before, the moment that you start playing, it's go, 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 go. You're constantly moving. You're constantly doing something. And it's super quick, super fast. It puts you into the action and you never feel like that you're you're being neglected on anything as far as the action of the game is concerned with the gunplay, sword play, and whatnot. The second pro that I would like to give is that it has a super active community. It is a massively large community. Uh, I would honestly say that that community is also very welcoming uh, from the last time that I've played. Uh, I don't know how it is at the current moment. Maybe it's something that I need to look into for the future. But the community itself, from my experience of playing Warframe, was not only super active and massively so, but they were willing to help anybody and everybody as long as you treated them with the same respect. And the last pro that I would like to give is that there are a lot and i mean tons tons of content in this game there is so much to do in this game you will not be in for want of anything as far as playing this game is concerned this is a game that you could literally jump into free to play and have so much to do in this game it will take you years years to get caught up years that's for new returning and experienced players there is so much to do in this game it is insane insane as to how much you can do however i do have to bring up some cons and these cons are ones that do need to be addressed and it's something that having talked to people in my personal community have told me before and I'm going to stick with stuff that they've personally said to me that they wish would change. Con number one, some elements in the game are pay to win. It quite literally, this is a game that initially gives you that free to play title. But once you get started and start pushing yourself further into the game, you'll start noticing that a lot of the elements that are in the game is literally pay to win. The more you put into this game money-wise, the faster you're going to get better at it and the faster you're going to get into the top tier ranks. That's just facts. It's just straight facts. It happened back when I was playing and it's more or less happening now. Let's just be honest. The second con that I would like to bring is that Warframe, just like First Descendants, is repetitive in its gameplay after a good while. 
you'll start to notice that in both First Ascendant and in Warframe that a lot of the stuff that you do in-game is constantly repeating itself over and over and over and over and over again to the point to where that you'll get so bored with it that you'll put it down after a while not come back to it for weeks months on end and then you'll jump back into it and start playing it again and then you'll do it until the repetitive gets boring and then you'll do it all over again that that to me is a con there should be some way in a free-to-play game that is as big as Warframe is that doesn't feel like that you're constantly repeating yourself to the point to where that your brain just wants to shut down because you're bored with it. And the last con that I would like to bring up for this game, and it's one that is, for me, a personal thing, and it's one that there are a lot of the community for Warframe that will strongly disagree with me on this, but that's okay. This is just my personal opinion, and that is what I am giving here this evening. But in my opinion, con number three is the storyline makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And I'm saying this because the moment that you jump into the tutorial as a new player, they show you the tutorial, give you a short little tutorial story to go with it, but then as soon as the tutorial is over, the storyline is like completely all over the place. It is so far out there as to what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to go, like the only way you're going to know any of that information is if you go to somebody who's more experienced than you and watch videos or have somebody who's played the game with you who can show you step by step what to do and how the story progresses lore wise like don't get me wrong the lore is like extremely well detailed and well thought out but it makes no sense it, it it's so confusing for people for new players and returning players especially, that they don't know what part of the story is the beginning and what part of the story is the end. Like, if you had this game set out to where that it would go step by step from tutorial to the latest DLC straight through and tell you exactly what happens in a very detailed manner, this game would be the top priority in my personal list. I would put Warframe before any other game in my inventory, period, if they would fix the issue where the story does not make sense to new or returning players at all. You don't know where to start. You don't know where to end. You don't know where the middle is. Fix the problem. It's not that complicated. That's just my personal opinion. Take it or leave it. But that is your pros and cons for Warframe. So I'm going to give some final thoughts right quick and uh, we'll end this video there. For those of you that have made it this far, I must commend you and thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I worked really hard to come up with these and wanted to give justice to all three of these games as it's these are the three games that I am asked about the most in my community. So I wanted to make sure that I did the justice exactly right and made sure that i had some decent pros and cons for each game but uh for those that are still watching please do me a favor and like and subscribe this on this video i would greatly appreciate it but my final thoughts on these three games is like i said all three of these games warframe destiny and the first descendant are really good games they really are they have their pros and the cons for each of them and uh, honestly each of the cons can be something that can be fixed if given the opportunity to be looked at and f done so by the devs of each of those games. It's just a matter of whether they're willing to do it or not. So they're not something that is a game breaker for me. It's more or less that I needed to come up with something that was fitting for each of the different games that pertain to me personally as well as people that were in my community so i hope that you guys understand that the first part of this video was all jokes it was all supposed to be funny um and i just wanted to give my opinions on these games because i was asked to do so so here they are but uh thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one bye guys